Welcome back to this tutorial series on how to play Stellaris. This is the second episode where we're going to be talking about frontier outposts and colonies. Now, last time, just to quickly recap, we talked about what you can do in the first six years as well as go over the basics of the game. This includes things like initial surveying, construction of spaceports, etc. And like I mentioned, this time we're going to be talking about colonies, but also try to do a little bit of stuff regarding our first a little bit of economy, because that is important as well. Now, where we left off last time, we had a colony ship ready to go towards our first system. We, have, we had selected a potentially habitable planet that is a size 24 with a lot of tile blockers. We'll get to those shortly. And with a lot of options available to us as well. Including a Gaia world that is down the quote-unquote pipe. And this is where our um, outpost is going to come into play. Anyway, um, let's have a quick look here at one of our science ships before we actually go in and set up our colony. So this science ship is 18 orders away. I think I'm done with this one, and I'm going to get it to survey uh, this system. This is going to be important, because we're going to try to put our outpost in this system. This will allow us to get a colony ship out of this world. This is a level 22 Gaia world, probably one of the best planets in the game, and actually set it up as a colony and the cost will be reduced because of the distance will be reduced so our science ship is underway and uh, in the meantime we have our colony ship now our colony ship is incredibly expensive it has an upkeep of eight a month uh, whilst it is in space but also whilst it is doing the colonization itself now we've gone for reach for the stars uh, that does not impact us all that much at the moment so we'll take a look at that shortly However, as our colony ship comes into the system, there we go, and it's nicely underway towards the planet. Look at that. They're all so happy to get ready here and set foot on their new world. Now, one thing to notice here is that this world is marked in yellow. A yellow world means that it is almost habitable for your species. If a species can hit about 70 habitability, it's considered to be good. Anything above Below 40 is considered un uninhabitable. For instance, this is a, um, a desert world which has 15 habitability. We got an arid world over here which has 20 ab habitability. A savanna world with 21, etc., etc. And there's another ocean world which, uh, that has a 60%. And this all has to do with the impact on um, both population growth and happiness the lower your happiness is the bigger chance of unrest there will be on your planet you will have to deal with that anyway we found ourselves another anomaly it is a failure risk 20 perfectly doable just go for it it's super easy anyway our colony ship is out and as we can see in our energy ledger we see here that we have a colonization cost modifier which costs us eight energy a month i think we can also overlook it here in our budget colonization cost eight a month and this is going to be important, because later on we will be able to f get ourselves a tradition that uh, halves the speed of colonization. I believe it is uh, this one, yes, a new life which reduces colonization development speed by 50%, effectively halving the cost. In the meantime, we found ourselves a alien amusement park. Let's go take a look at the alien amusement park. It looks like it's on a barren world, so it's going to be completely useless to us. So let's right-click back onto Cool Name and take a look at the planet itself. The reassembled ship shelter, which is the remains of your ship, is currently set being set up. And that's exactly what we need. We basically need this ship shelter ready. And in the meantime, if we look at our galactic map, we will see that our borders are starting to grow. It looks like our neighbors have put out a, a frontier outpost in this area. This is a problem because it means we no longer have access to Procyon, which is an amazing system. Which is why we are going to go and try to change the way the borders flow. How are we going to do this, you ask? Well, first of all, we're going to wait till this system is done colonizing. As the system colonizes, the uh, borders will slowly grow. And once it's settled, you will know where uh, how far it is. In the meantime, we will uh, get into some different problems. Our neighbors, the Void, that is all, do not like us very much at the moment because of border friction, which is a minus 34 modifier 
currently. This means that they are now wary of us. How can we offset that while at the same time keeping them happy? Well, we can do a trade deal by uh, sending them either food, minerals, or energy. Right now, I am not feeling too comfortable by trying to bribe them in the trade menu. We can just go there, do a monthly transfer for, say, 30 years, say, two, and that would offset the modifier, and we should be even be able to get a research agreement with them. But right now, considering our mineral income, it is just not worth the effort. In the meantime, we found a small rectangular object on the surface of this moon. Considering we are skill 2 and there's a 40% failure risk, we're going to leave it for now. It's a little bit too dicey to go for that. Okay, we have surveyed this entire system, which is great for us. Because it allows us to set up a frontier outpost. And because of the traits that we picked in the traditions tree, our, all of our frontier outposts are considered to be halfway of the distance for regarding colonization. Which means that they are cheaper. Hell, we can even maybe put it in here. It will cost now 114, uh, still with 12, 200 minerals. But if we put a uh, if we put an outpost here, we have access to both this world, this world, and this world, uh, basically with an extremely short reach. We've got that event that we were waiting for, the birth of space piracy. And we're going to need to spend a bunch of minerals to take care of this. The pirates have spawned. They will always spawn as soon as you get a building, a structure, or a colony outside of your solar system. This can be a serious problem if you have a frontier outpost nearby your space. As you can see, we have one energy that is currently being mined, and they're going after this system in Bernard's Star. There are 171, that means they're slightly stronger than us. They have four ships. How are we going to offset this, you ask? Well, we can do the following. We can go to our sign leader and get our, grab an admiral. Now, right now, we don't have very good admirals available. One with additional leader gain or a scout, which increases our sensor range, which is not all that impressive. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep it. If we had one of the other admirals that would allow us to get more firepower, we would have definitely gone for it and tried to attack them. But in the meantime, the cost would be way too high. So let's recruit a new Admiral that does sublight speed plus 20 so they can move a little bit faster. All right, let's pause the game. We got our research complete, which is great, and means that we can get our next technology. Right now, it looks like nuclear missiles are very, very cheap, but do we really want to go down the missile path? That is a question you have to ask yourself. I do not agree that this is a good idea. Therefore, I'm going to go for nanocomposite armor, as uh, it is relatively easy to do. It's 37 months, and in the meantime, we still have coil gun available as well. But nanocomposite armor is going to make our ships a little bit more tanky. We have some tile blocker uh, technology available. So let's first off, let's take a look at the surface here. We've got three potential tiles that have tile blockers on them that we can remove with that particular piece of science. As you can see, we got uh, monthly influence plus one, which is great. Uh, in addition, our, we also have adaptive bureaucracy, which increases the amount of leaders that we have by two, as well as the amount of leaders we can pull, uh, pick from by one, or increase our max influence from faction by one as well, which means that we would get 3.1 influence from a faction. Right now, I'm a little bit in the middle of this. I'm not entirely sure what we should pick here. I am going to go, however, for the tile blockers so we can remove those tiles from that planet called Cool Name, mainly because the mineral output for this area seems to be incredibly useful. Okay, we have enough ships to take down these uh, these pirates. They have already, they're already relatively low in shield, so let's select our fleet, right-click on them, and we will engage them in our very first conflict in the game. Didn't expect that we would have all this stuff going on this early, did you? Because, you know, initially I said, hey, let's just do colonization and outposts. Well, it, uh, it is not the case. In the meantime, we've noticed that uh, we have a ship coming off the production line while uh, the other fleet is already out there. And because we have set a rally point with this fleet, the other ship will automatically join up. So we're in range here. Let's pause the game. Let's, see this, let's look at the situation and see what we have available. Let's select our ship, and as you can see, we have the fleet combat screen in front of us. The enemy has a leader, and they have exactly the same type of leader as we do. They are both scouts. They have raiders. Their individual power is 42. In our case, it's 33, but we have more ships. 
And overall, having more guns available, in my personal opinion, is better than anything else. Um, having more of something uh, with slightly less firepower is a lot better because it has more means you have more targets to shoot at. As you can see, our ships will open fire. There's a bunch of calculations currently going on in the background. Uh, it looks like these guys have lost all of their shields already because of our station being uh, helpful here. In the meantime, we're going to go and send our space uh, a spaceship over here. However, as you can see, we cannot click on anything. That is because our, spa our spaceship is currently set to being evasive. It means it will not be able to enter any system that has a confirmed enemy in it. So we also have the option to go for passive or aggressive. Aggressive is only for combat ships. However, we will send it in passive, move the ship in here. And there's a good reason for this, because we are going to do some stuff with the wrecks of these pirates as soon as they are dead. This will go and tick along by themselves. As you can see, we have a bunch of surveying going on, nothing too crazy, as a construction queue is also finished at Earth, as another uh, combat ship rolls off the production line. And they will be joining the fleet over in Bernard Star for additional combat versus the pirates. It doesn't look like we've actually lost any ships just yet, although some of our ships are slightly damaged. Sadly, there is no real way of individually managing the positioning of the ships or changing the, the sides of shields or anything along those lines. And we have won the fight. All right, let's uh, pause the game and see what is up. Um, as you can see, we had technically two fleets engaged here because our first fleet had not joined yet with the other ships. However, if we go to the main fleet, the third fleet, we will be able to see that no ships were lost and four enemy ships were destroyed. The total damage output on our side was 1300, while the enemy did not have anything near that. They also lost all of their shields due to their initial engagement with the mining station over here. And in addition to that, they were not able to crack our ships all that well. It also looks like they were mostly kinetic weapon uh, orientated, uh, which is quite good. Another thing to look out for here is the evasion. Our evasion is really high on our ships. It's 24, which means that we are more likely to evade enemy shots. Also, we are uh, we have a better time actually shooting, which is rather useful in terms of um, you know going in the combat. And if you look at our ship design down in here, you'll be able to see that that is mainly because of our ship-mounted radar as well as our chemical thrusters. Anyway, let's go and take a look at the fleet. The fleet is a little bit damaged, as you can see on the left side here. There's a lot of damage on some of these ships. So what do we do? Well, we send it back towards Space Dock to get healed. We click on this button, repair fleet, and back home it goes. Now, in the meantime, we, have, we are currently sending our science ship back home. Remember that guy? Well, we're going to go and select him and go to Bernard Star because there is something that has popped up here. A special project in Bernard Star. Now, if we hover over it in a very particular way, if I can get it, it doesn't look like it. We'll just click on it in this case. Is that we can see what kind of stuff has been dropped. It is effectively a loot box. If you ever played anything like an MMO or anything along the lines of any RPGs, we are going to steal all their stuff. Anyway, we can see that they had small fission reactors, which is the same thing. But the thing that is interesting for us here is the deflectors, which is shields, uh, which is pretty great. They also had afterburners, as well as some other very interesting things like ship mount and radar system. I think we already had that as well. So right now we can get small deflectors out of this, as well as afterburners. Let's go and send our sign ship towards there at, in order to get this uh, set up. We're just waiting right now as the ship is in warp, which means that we cannot give it any orders. So you can see, there it goes. And there you go. And he's in the system. And we can right-click here and research on all projects in the system. And that will allow us to uh, get that technology. In the meantime, let's go, to go take a look at uh, Cool Name, our colony that is currently underway. And uh, it is doing quite well. We're almost there. It's a couple of months away. Uh, colonization will be completed at the end of this year. And then we can have a lay of the land to see how our territory is looking. As you can see, the enemy, well, our neighbors, so to speak, also have a um, 
influence outpost right next door, something that I am not particularly happy with. Let's take a look at our own outpost that we're building all the way down here in the middle of all these planets, these juicy, juicy planets that we want to colonize. We'll just have to give it a little bit of time until it is ready. In the meantime, let's take a look at our planet. Is there anything here that is interesting for us to build? Well, there is. Let's go and build. It is not available to us, sadly, yet, which is a bit of a shame. I was going to go for the Octoton Memorial, but it looks like that is not available to our species. Probably because it is militarist, and we are not a militarist species. Different ethics have, have own unique buildings, and the Akatan Memorial should be one of those. Anyway, a uh, cool name is almost there. As you can see, our borders are growing nicely, and including, we now have border access towards Sirius as well as Krimdor. What does this mean for us? Well, it means that we can build a, another construction ship, as our other construction ship is down here getting this part of the galaxy ready for uh, colonization. And we can use that additional construction ship as soon as it comes off the factory line, which will be relatively soon, to uh, start harvesting these two worlds, specifically the mineral account. Anyway, cool name is done. So what do we have here on cool name? Well, first off, as soon as we click on it, we'll be greeted by the spaceport um, screen. We currently do not have a spaceport. If we wanted to build one, it would cost us, I think, 380 minerals. Uh, 360 even, it says it on the screen. My apologies for that. However, our planetary summary seems to be pretty decent. There is a plus two energy output here, which is nice. Uh, naturally, there is 13 minerals available, 14 food, which is also awesome, and one Batharian stone, which is a strategic resource, which we will have to mine at some point. Anyway, looking at our food production, it's currently plus two, which is pretty awesome, and we want to keep it like that. So let's build... Oh, we can build an Akatan Memorial for some reason. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, we're going to build a mine on this tile. This will automatically override all food that is on this tile and will not be collected. We're going to move this guy over to here, just so that we have this... Um, when this building is done, that is automatically being worked. And in addition, we have our other pop that is currently growing. Let's take a quick look here. As you can see, it is currently growing at a rate of 1.09 a month. This is... Normally, you would have one, but it we are getting a higher rate because of our... Um, food being, uh, our food stores being full, basically. The more overflow you have in food, the faster your population will boom. And that is rather useful, to say the least. Cool, we have analyzed some of this debris, and we've managed to get deflector technology, nanocomposite materials, and afterburner technology. We get a 10% progress bo uh, boost here, and that is pretty good. 10% in this particular case is just hops of 10%. It is not accumulative uh, percentages, which wouldn't be all that great. Anyway, we have finished research speed, which is awesome because research speed is something that you want relatively early. And instantly you can see we have the deflectors available, even though we do not have any technologies that allow us to get four research options. It even says it on the screen. Up to three new options will be generated, but there is four. Why? Because we've partially researched deflectors. Which is kind of cool, and the deflectors are incredibly good. However, considering our economy is currently okay-ish, we kind of want to focus on some other stuff, uh, which in this particular case would be the energy storage capacity and power plant 2 due to field modulation. Basically, it allow us, allows us to get a stronger economy a lot faster. Now that our construction ship is off the factory line, we can go and take a look at the system that we may or may not want to put a mineral uh, uh, station in. As you can see, there is a plus three uh, planet here. Right click on it and let's go and build ourselves a mine. We have a similar situation next door. Crimdor has a plus two. That is great. Uh, as soon as those stations are done, they will give us five a month extra. And they will pay back for themselves relatively quickly. The Magellan has finished uh, surveying the system, which is awesome. Let's go and send them over towards some of the more nearby stuff and slowly work their way down towards our soon-to-be-done Gaia world that is sitting nicely in the south. And it looks like it is done. Excellent. Cool. 
So this Gaia world, if we want to colonize it, it would now cost us only 30 influence. Normally it would cost us over 400. But due to the range of this influence outpost, to as in the closeness to the actual system, the cost has been considerably lowered, which is exactly what we want. Do not be afraid to build outposts. Do not be afraid to spend influence on outposts. Factions will allow for a lot more uh, influence that can offset any sort of outpost building. And especially in combination with the, the Reeks for the Stars tradition, it allows us to get outposts pretty much everywhere and half or even, well, decimate the total cost of building faraway planets from your core systems, which in this case would be Sol and, of course, Cool Name. Overall, I think this has been a interesting look at uh, colonization so far. Let's go have a quick look here uh, regarding our food. As you can see, our food is currently at minus zero. This is because we do not have enough food stores. St and this is basically done through population growth. Now, thankfully, due to some looking forward uh, at the actual, um, you know, what planets are, have available to themselves, I have put one pop on a plus three food tile. This is great because it means that we can build a hydroponics farm on, on top of it, which will increase food by two. So soon this will be a five food tile, which will help our population grow once again. As you can see, we're currently at minus food, and our population growth is now down to one a month. We can quickly take a look at Earth. Is there anything interesting here that we can do food-wise? It doesn't appear to be the case. We could do some energy, which I do feel we need at this moment in time because our economy is struggling slightly. That's mainly because of the construction ships building uh, border stations over here. And uh, that is pretty much it. Let's go and take a look at our traditions. Uh, we have more unity available due to the fact that we have, uh, well, basically gotten enough over time. And we can go and pick something here. We can go for Galactic Ambitions, which uh, in reduces the cost of Frontier Outposts uh, by half a influence point and 1.5 energy. Or we can go for Colonization Fever, where Capital Buildings will now produce one additional unity. I highly suggest that even though we have some outposts, we go for Colonization Fever, because right now it will add two unity to us a month, up to seven. And going from five to seven may not seem like a lot, but in the early game, and considering the amount of influence required over a long period of time, it is a huge amount that you do want to keep in mind. Of course, at some point, you will get hundreds of influence a month, and you will need that, because some of the late game traditions will cost hundreds of points, if not thousands of points. But right now, two is a huge deal. Do not underestimate the uh, importance of that. It looks like we had a failure on one of our science ships. That is fine. Nobody died. And it looks like we're uh, having some more mining being done over here as well. In the meantime, let's take a look at the void that is all. And uh, it looks like they still don't like us because of border friction. But thankfully, our xenophile diplomacy is offsetting that quite nicely. So now we need to go and balance our, um, uh, balance our stuff a little bit. Sensors pick up an unexpected activity from an isolated point on the frozen surface of this planet. It is a uh, level one. We have three skills on our scientists. It's a failure risk zero. We can whatever get, we whatever spawns there, we can effectively get it for free, which is awesome. Um, food, though, potentially a problem. As a uh, Interesting. What has happened here? I'm quickly trying to figure out. Oh, this pop needs consumer goods. Okay, fair enough. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look here at happiness. Now, happiness is important when it comes to balancing your um, your economy as well as your population when it comes to unrest. So, considering we've decided to colonize a planet that is not necessarily within our range of habitability. Um, the maximum happiness that can be done here is 60. Now, if we go to Earth, and Earth has a maximum happiness 
of 65. This is because of the um, amount of our uh, type of planet that we have here. Anyway, let's take a look at this event. Uh, it looks like we have a special event that has multiple things. We can add a new leader to our uh, pool, which is, and I quickly need to take a look here. Um, it looks like, well, he's just called an exile. So we can add him back towards the leader pool, and let's see what we got here. The scientist, the exile, who is resilient, that means he gets, or she gets, 25 additional uh, years of life in her. Okay, we have another uh, science ship ready for scouting purposes. We're going to go and send it around, and let's see what we can find with it. Now, we should be getting towards the point where we can build yet another colony, which is going to be on this Gaia world, which will be our second colony. Now, this is an interesting one. So, we have a democratic ruler election. A democratic ruler election is a functionality of a democracy, which is one of the government forms that is available within the game. We also have oligarchy, with dictatorship, and empire. Dictatorship and empire, the rulers lead, lead for life. The empire has a heir. The dictatorship has a election. An oligarchy has an election every 40 years. And a democracy has it every few years. I'm not entirely sure if it's 10 or 6. Well, we have to take a look at that. But we have the option to spend influence, in this case, 50 influence, which we have more than enough of, on a leader that we want. Now, we will not pick that leader specifically. What we will do instead is we will increase the chance of that leader being taken. Now, we have a bunch of leaders here, and they're all part of our empire. Now, for instance, the exile um, allows for the colony building costs to be reduced by 35%, as well as increasing the colony development speed. And considering this leader is currently not doing anything, I do think that that is important. Uh, that one does not have any faction support, though, which is a bit of a shame. But our own ruler, our current ruler, is here as well. And, uh, well, she has been in control for one term. So let's go and support the exile because of the Frontier Spirit modifier. So as you can see, uh, the exile immediately goes up to the top. It now has a 18% of the vote share. And uh, let's see whether or not she is going to be elected within our empire. I do hope so, because it allows us to build colony ships a lot faster. And then we can get this Gaia world underway. And it is so pretty. Look at this. A Gaia world with 100% habitability, maximum happiness, and uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I want it, and I need it. In addition, if you're wondering, well, how are you going to fill up this gap there, uh, uh, A-Spec? Well, we can either put a frontier outpost in here, or we can colonize this planet. Now, our, it looks like our candidate has been voted in, and that is great, because it means that our colony ships will now be extremely cheap. As well as our colonies will grow very, very fast. So let's go to our expansion planner. Hotkey for that is F9. So there is a Gaia world available. For only 30 influence, we can colonize it. It has 7 food on it, 4 energy, which is a little bit low, 8 minerals, 8 social science, and 8 engineering. So let's take a look at this. Let's take one of our colony ships and send it out there. Now we want to get maximum uh, bonuses to um, adjacency. So let's take a, a, a tile that has potentially amazing adjacency bonuses and one already pops up it when one comes to mind which is this one so let's give it another cool name there we go and the thing with this particular world is it has a special modifier like the therian stone which increases power production called alien pets now alien pets increases local happiness as well as does uh, increase social science on that world, which is pretty damn good. The main problem we're currently experiencing, however, is that we are going to run into some energy problems. So let's get these mining stations up and running here. Uh, we have selected the wrong uh, construction ship because this one will start to venture across the galaxy to go there. And this construction ship up in here is should be doing some energy as well. Let's take a look at our options. We have an energy station that is four. We sadly need 90 mineral, minerals in order to get that done. 
Ooh, we have select, uh, detected life signs coming from somewhere between the barren and lifeless surface of this planet. That is very nice. We have an alien species here, the Crooks. It doesn't look like uh, they're anything interesting. Just uh, space bugs, basically. Speaking of space bugs, uh, the void that is all is starting to like us less and less because of border friction. I do not agree with, the, with them because all space is ours and that is what we want. Especially Procyon because Procyon looks like to be a very good system. A lot of minerals, a lot of energy and also a lot of engineering. So how are we going to go about this? How are we going to take this system? Well, we can build what is called, once again, a Frontier Outpost. Plus three minerals. Uh, a Frontier Outpost will allow us to push the border back a little bit. Now, they had their own Frontier Outpost in this Pulsar system over here, which is potentially a little bit annoying, and it may impede us a little bit, but Alpha Centauri is closer to uh, this system than anything else. In addition to that, Alpha Centauri also has a continental world on it. So what we can do is we can build a outpost on here and then colonize the system at some point in the future. And that will take over the job of the outpost itself. So then we can dismantle the outpost and let the planet, it, uh, planet radius take care of everything. Anyway, we got plus plus four food at the moment. Let's take a look at our colonial growth. As you can see, we now have a growth of 1.17, which is a lot more than the 1.09 we were experiencing earlier. Very nice. I am. This is looking to be a pretty decent empire. We're currently 10 years into the game. We have only one neighbor so far. Overall, I think we are pretty happy with this let's take one more look at cool name to see what is going on here and oh my god it looks like one of our pops has spawned and uh it's a recent immigrant oh yeah of course how could i forget about that so if we go into our policies there is a thing called and i quickly need to take a look at it if we can find it core species i believe it's a resettlement no it is not Anyway, there should be a modifier which allows migration between worlds. So all species are allowed to migrate between worlds. Now, right now, considering cool name is in fact a cool name, all the cool kids on Earth are like, we're gonna go and leave this world. We're gonna leave on this other we're gonna live on this other planet, are now moving between those two systems. There's other ways of forcing population to move as well. How do we do this? Well, what we can do is we can use the resettle option. Sadly, right now it is not allowed, but however, what it does is it brings up a screen with the planet as well as the planet target. You can move pops in between worlds. This does cost uh, resources, generally it costs influence. Anyway, um, cool name seems to be doing fine. We have a little bit of unemployment here, which is not all that great. Uh, energy is becoming a little bit of a problem. So what we're going to do here is not build any energy. We're going to build an Akaton Memorial because we want one of those. We currently do not have the option to remove any of these tile blockers. There is a thing in the game to remove all of them almost instantly, but sadly we do not have that. Anyway, it looks like our colony ship at Earth is almost done. Shouldn't be too long anymore. There it is. It pops off the production line. It does look like we do not have enough energy, so we're going to need to mine this planet as fast as possible. Why this one in particular? Because it generates four, and this one only generates two. And we only have enough money to build one station. Actually, I am going to cancel that, because that would impede our... Uh, ability to build a outpost on that world relatively quickly. As you can see, there's also some natural border growth going on. There is natural border growth within our systems that allows us to gain more territory over time, uh, which is something you want to keep in the back of your head. Anyway, we're moving our construction ship towards Alpha Centauri, and it looks like we should be able to build an outpost for only 200 minerals. Let's go and do that, and let's see what the outcome is. And from that moment onward, we're going to wrap up this episode. Because we've already been talking for about 35 minutes, and uh, I think we've learned more than enough already. 
Okay, our colony ship is down here. What is our? Where is our cost coming from right now? Right now, we're getting most of our costs from ship maintenance, which is coming from the colony ship. So if we hover over the colony ship, you will see that maintenance cost is eight. So as long as you have a colony ship in space, it will cost eight minerals to keep it flying. Of course, the faster you put it down on a colony, the better. So we got nano composite army uh, armor. Let's get some new research. We have a couple of good options here. We can get afterburners, although that takes 76 months, which is way too long. We got this from the pirates, by the way. We can go for a improved spaceport, which allows us to get, build the Corvette assembly yards, which allows us to build ships faster. Or we can get the mining network. Right now, I do feel that the mining network is rather critical because we do not have access to all that many minerals. And the ones we do have access to, we're trying to mine as fast as we can. We have a single science ship that is currently not doing anything. We're going to move it over towards this system to see if we can get any additional information about this particular area. Hopefully we can get some good resources out of it. If not, if not well, that's sadly how it is. Plus 112 good we're currently at minus zero we got more than enough money let's go build a mining station in order to uh, get some more stuff going on now McCool name is currently colonizing how fast is it colonizing well it will be done next year and it will so right now it will take approximately 19 months to get this colonized like i said before a new life will allow us to do it a lot faster 50% faster. In only 10 months, we'll be able to colonize that world if we had enough unity. Speaking of which, when can we do something again with unity? In 11 months. It's not bad. Very good. Now, we are currently in the development stages of our empire, and growth is still a thing. But what we want to start aiming at is finishing the expansion tree. Why? Because we want to get more directly controlled systems. Let's take a look here at our construction ship in Alpha Centauri. Let's hope that we're going to get enough border range to grab to grab this uh, system. It will increase our border friction, right? As right now it is at 49. Very shortly we'll take a look at what it actually is going to be as soon as that construction ship is done. That's an Alpha Centauri. And it's currently at 70%. Make that 75 almost there okay this construction ship is done it's done everything it needs to do and it looks like we got some more energy down in here in yinium which is our new colony in another cool name so frontier outposts should be done in about 10 percent which is relatively quickly let's speed things up a little bit just to get stuff along a little bit quicker There it is. And as you can see, the outpost has increased our border range to increase to Procyon, which allows us to get access to these uh, patches of resources. If we take a look at our neighbors, it does look like they don't really care. Our border friction is still minus 49. So, what have we learned this episode? Well, we've talked a little bit about how colonization works and how happiness is impacted as well as balancing economy and migration, as well as the functionality of the outpost system. Whether or not you want to use them as a hop, skip, and a jump to a new area of space like we've done down here, or to take systems from a, another empire by using border growth and influence. I hope that this was useful to you in terms of learning Stellaris. And once again, if you're a new player, feel free to take it slow. It is a fun game, especially in the early stages. And feel free to explore and experiment. The sky is the limit. There's many things that you can do. And don't worry if you mess up. Just don't play an Iron Man game. You can just roll back and try something else, a different approach to what or what you may have done wrong. If you're a vet and you've learned something here, feel free to leave a comment below and uh, see what your experience in Stellaris have been so far. In the meantime, if you like this, well, you can leave a uh, you can subscribe or leave a like. Of course, the dislike button is there as well, and uh, we're gonna leave it at that at 40 minutes in tutorial time. I like why we've only we've just played another six years, just like the previous episode. It looks like we got a theme going on here. Until next time, good fight, good night, and something else.